to the marriage, now what? So, Ashley, we just uh, went on vacation. I took my family, and you took your family. Uh, let's compare notes on how it went. <laughs> yes, we did just go on vacation. And this was actually the first time I've ever taken the kids on vacation by myself. Like, Ooh. I've always taken them with my husband or with my sister, but I've never braved taking my kids all by myself for an extended amount of time. Proud of you. Give her a you. All right. Oh, and to top it off, I even let them pack their own bags. So I felt like major rock star bond there. Well, we let our <laughs> kids pack their own bags too, but that's because we're lazy, you know, so. <laughs> no, I'm too much of a controller. Like, I got to know you got clean clothes, enough underwear, but this time I was like, I don't even care. Yeah, my girls purposely don't pack enough so that they, oh, Dad, I need to buy this while we're gone. Oh I don't know gosh. how many times Eliza said, Dad, we need to go shopping. We need to go shopping. Oh, my gosh. That's so funny. Yeah. So what happened on your trip? What's well, the big revelation you got going? I'm telling you. So I had an incident happen on this trip, and it, I feel like it's transformed my parenting. And I was like, we need to talk about this. I think this is a really good thing to talk about. Um, just to get someone else's perspective, we haven't even had this conversation yet. Nope, you hold them back. So, <laughs> um, Wednesday, we went and we met some friends over at the beach, and then we went back to their hotel and we were swimming, and all the kids were having a blast. I mean, you know, we just kind of let them go, play, and us moms were just relaxing, and this guy comes up to me, and he goes, whose kid is this? I'm going to be very vague. <laughs> Try not to wrap my kid out. Whose kid is this? Well, now we know it's your kid. Well, obviously, <laughs> but you don't know which one. And uh, he goes, I just wanted to let you know that this kid is very, very disrespectful. And I'm like, oh, crap, what did he do? You know, oops, kind of narrowing it down there. But um, with this one, I never know what to expect. You know what I mean? So I was kind of like bracing myself, but like, uh, can't be that bad. And the gentleman goes on to say, um, he asked me if I was a boy or a girl. And then he said, my son said something else that I know is a blatant lie because my son doesn't even know the words that was in that man's sentence. And he goes, and then he asked me why I had a pink water bottle. And I'm like, okay, well, buddy, it's not really okay uh, for you to ask somebody if they're a boy or a girl and I mean you got to think when someone comes up to you and like tells you this outlandish stuff and even throws in a lie in the middle of it it kind of catches you off guard as a parent and you're like how do I even handle this like people are watching you this guy's being loud my kid's sitting here like embarrassed because this guy called him out and um I'm like okay well I need you to apologize like this is not okay we can't ask people if they're girls or boys and my child looked at me like what and I'm like I need you to apologize please because this man's sitting there clearly wanting some sort of repercussion from the dishonor that my child did to him you know and so my kid ended up apologizing but it didn't set well with me at all for some reason and I just let him go and play and the guy walked off and I was like, gosh, why am I not okay with this? Like, this situation in general is just so bizarre as it is. And what kind of world are we living in today to where an adult is going to come up to me offended because a child asked if you're a boy or a girl? And so I wrestled with it all night. And I'm very non-confrontational. <laughs> like, I don't like drama. I don't like calling people out on their crap like I'll call myself out all day long but I'm not gonna call somebody else out and all night long I was like uh there were probably a dozen other ways I could have handled that way better you know like why did I not go to my child's defense instead of trying to make this man this adult man happy and in that moment, I realized I am never going to make my child apologize for something that they clearly don't understand. First, that was wrong of me to sit there and insist on my child apologizing to this man, this grown man, for asking what to my child, what seemingly to my child was a very <clears throat> innocent question. Like he didn't know. He's just now getting to the stage where he realizes there's more than one gender. You know what I mean? Like he's, and 
he's kind of late to the game on this, unfortunately. <laughs> but, like, he's realizing, oh, there's boys, there's girls. Sometimes girls may look a little bit like a boy. Sometimes a boy may look a little bit like a girl. Like, he's trying to put all these pieces together. And to he'll even ask me in public, Mom, is that a boy or a girl? And I'll answer him the best, you know, to, of my ability. And, you know, we kind of we have a little chat and then that's it like that's just developmentally where he's at right now and so for me to sit there and insist you apologize for asking a question that you wanted to know about is i believe it's wrong and not just that but i felt like it was a very selfish move on my part do you know what i mean like sitting there trying to I don't know maybe save face and appease this person standing in front of me so that he would be happy and walk away and leave us alone all on the altar of my child's understanding like that's that to me is not okay I mean, we need to be having conversations, sure, and we need to be explaining things to our kids, most definitely. But it's like saying, Ben, you need to apologize to me because you can't go out there and change the engine in my car. You don't know nothing about engines and cars. You know what I mean? I'm sorry. But do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, right. that, I just feel like it's, it's just not okay because I'm more concerned about protecting myself and making someone else happy than I am protecting my child's heart and their understanding in that moment and man let me tell you I felt tremendous mom guilt for that like <laughs> major mom guilt but then a whole nother wave of questions came on me and I know I, I may just completely butcher this with political correctness but would a transgendered person or someone who was homosexual or part of the LGBTQ community, would they not see it as an honor if someone asked them, what gender are you? So that someone can address them properly. I know that they get offended if you call them their own gender that they identify with. But like, was my child not just innocently doing what someone else would consider is there an honorable thing to do, yet someone else took offense from it? You know what I mean? I just don't, like, I want answers to these kind of questions so I can educate my children, because this is the world we live in now. You know, like, there are people who identify differently, and, and we're going to have to be aware of that, and not just for ourselves, but to be able to show them compassion and to treat them with love the way that they can receive it if that makes sense. And so the last two days I've just been like, oh my gosh, Ashley, you've like really had to reevaluate how to reach your kid's heart, but not just that, but to teach them how to respect and love others well too in the middle of it, you know? I mean, it may not be okay to go around asking people, are you a boy or a girl? Okay. But he's an eight-year-old little boy. You know what I mean? Like, he's a kid. Right. For me, there's two issues here. The one issue is uh, allowing people to punish your kids the way that they think I you know. should punish your kids. Uh, you know, kids running in the grocery store, knocks over something, and you, hey, get back here, and you need to clean this up. Or I see a lot of times uh, people parenting kids that aren't their kids, and it's like, whoa, 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 <laughs> you know, uh, you don't know my kid, you know, you exactly. don't have the right over me to start demanding that I do these things. Why do you feel you have the right over my kid to do these things? Or then even the right over me to demand that I do that to my kid. So, yeah, I mean, I would probably think about that. I mean, sometimes I've yielded also, you know, um, a guy calls me up, he says, hey, your son's doing this, and I'm like, well, I'll punish him depending upon what I feel is punishable and he's like well your son will never see me again and I said well that's as far as your punishment can go you know mm -hmm. or you know my son can never see your daughter again fine that's your punishment that's your standard for your daughter and my son will adhere to that 
But as far as like me spanking or grounding or doing stuff on top of that to please you, that you know you feel better about the hardship, pinnacle thing that my son's going through because of what he did to your daughter or what you know you feel you did as a bad dad, you know. And I think that's some of the things is is just to understand what people are going through. This guy, they're going through a divorce, right? And he's away from his daughter. Uh, he feels responsible in some of the ways, never talks to his daughter about any of these things. And so, uh, and then demands for my son to be this great guy and you know in adolescence kids go through things they ask questions they're wondering they're trying to figure it out i remember um so we have uh i have a gay sister-in-law and she's married and she has kids and and so uh you know we take our kids around and so these questions are arising and um you know we have to figure out like all right truth is truth yes they are gay. Yes, they are married. Yes, they do have kids. And they look at it and they want to ask questions because they're trying to process between, well, why aren't we gay? Well, why are we man and woman? Well, how did we have kids? How do they have kids? And we have kids and they have different things going on in their bodies. And so, you know, they're just processing. So, I mean, yeah, 100% normal that your son would say, hey, probably because like you said before, if he asks you, when he's with you, he feels safe that adults would answer him with truth and knowledge. Right. So he probably felt safe asking this guy that all people, older adults are kind, generous, you know, they'll, they'll educate, they'll help. But obviously this guy took offense to it. And again, why did he take offense? Maybe because of his past experiences or feeling like he's being judged or stuff like that. Now, you know, he's turned all of his anger from the judgment of whatever he's felt like from his parents or siblings or work or whatever. And he's throwing all that judgment onto a kid, which is the wrath, right? You know, he's had years and years of all this emotional buildup stuff. If he was gay or not, I don't know. But then it's taken out on this kid because usually we usually take out punishment on the weakest person. And so here's your weakest person, a kid who can't defend himself and then apologize. But then a woman, you know, so it goes to a woman. Like if he came to me and he's like saying this stuff, my reaction would probably be a lot different. You know, right. not that you did anything wrong because I'm also a big believer in peace. You know, I was talking to somebody the other day and, uh, you know, he was trying to tell my wife what to do. And I was like, oh, I'm going to call him. <laughs> you know, so I called him up. And then I realized, for me, in this not every situation, I realized this guy needs a win. He, he was also going through a divorce and different things like that. And I was like, this guy needs a win. I'm going to just give him a win. I'm going to let him slide. But I'm going to at least make my voice, hey, here I am, you know, this isn't going to happen or continue. <clears throat> and so, like, my wife was like, well, what happened? What would you do? And I've reacted physically and, you know, stuff like that before. And so, you know, when she heard my response to giving this guy a win, who was mean to her, demanding of her things, uh, she was like, wow, I can't believe you did that. And I kept the peace in that situation. So I'm not saying that you always have to be hard because – Peace is what we want. Now, what are you going to do with that afterwards? You know, uh, it was funny because you were you were saying that I had kind of a similar thing. My four year old, who's a girl, says uh, to my son, who's almost thirteen now, "Wow, your gina looks different, or you know, weird." <laughs> or, you know, and we're like, we're sitting in the room, we're like, first of oh, all, that's gosh. not a gina, <laughs> you know, and, and you know, but like to her, she's processing. Wow, he's a lot weirder than mine, you know, or my sisters, or. You know, and just the fact that she used the word Gina is because that's what, you know, my wife uses with our, with her. So, you know, for her, she's like, well, how is this? Because my, you know, so she's trying to figure things out. Kids are trying to process information. And we as adults, we also are always trying to process information. Uh, so, yeah, I do think it's kind of hard to put a demand on society that we have clear understanding of everything that's going on in people emotionally. Mm -hmm. And even harder than to demand that kids have that same understanding and then respect. You yeah. know, like, it, he's asking for respect, but did he really respect your kid for being naive? Right. You know, right. so it's like you're demanding respect from us, but you're not giving us respect either. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's a lot of different variables on this. I, I'm not trying to say that there's one right. I can see his side. I can see your side. I can see your son's side. I mean, you know, in all of this scenario, uh, I don't think there's necessarily 
a right way, but I think there's a definite understanding of it's not right for strangers to punish our kids. Right. I think that's a and I think step that's we what, need to have. Like, definitely hit home for me was it was I realized I hesitated. I mean, in the moment, I was doing the best that I thought I could do with that situation. Right. Although, hindsight, I'm like, gosh, you could have done way better. Um, but I hesitated and then made my child do something that, I mean, he clearly, he was like, but why am I apologizing? And I'm like, it's just not, it's just not okay, but it kind of is okay. Like, that's where you're at. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, let me, let me throw a question out here then. All right. Is it okay to question a person? But what about if it's okay to say, hey, that person's ugly, and then they hear? Right. Like, why is my judgment, now I can't say you're ugly, because that's not politically correct to say you're ugly, when I think you're ugly. Mm -hmm. No offense. But you know what I'm saying? Like, so it, now it's demeaning that I can't even classify you as ugly and this other person pretty, because that is it's respect and honor and stuff like that and that's what i kind of feel like the same thing like if you like a certain thing is that okay sure if i don't like a certain thing is that okay i i feel like the grace needs to be both ways right like you want to have the grace to be the way that you are hey great but then at least have the grace for me to be able to be the way that I am, you know? And I mean, and I think that's where parenting and relationship and activity with strangers comes in, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, am I okay with being me? First of all, that's the biggest struggle. Am I, am I, did I do like mom guilt? You're like, am I okay with the decision that I made with my kid in this instance, you know? And here's the great thing about it is you can always go back to your son and re-talk and, and talk right. again and talk again. Unfortunately, the stranger's gone. It's, it was such a temporary moment. You don't want to have temporary moments, especially with strangers, impacting you and your kid for years in life. You know, like that's, I think that's where the foul is. Like, you know, that this person in 10 minutes can wreck your kid's world of trust of strangers and, and stuff like that. Um, you know, and that's what I feel as the, the bigger impact here is, you know, what was the lasting result that potentially could happen out of this? Mm -hmm. That obviously this guy cares nothing about, you know. So he can demean or wreck your kids' views and, and all of this to feel good about himself. And that's a sad point, you know, that the guy felt so sad about himself that he needed to hear a kid utter I'm sorry so that he could feel good about his choices. And back to the point of... Are you making the choices that you are going to demand everybody agree with? Or can you make the choice that you like something and nobody agree with it? Yeah. You know, and that's where I'm kind of with my kids on parenting. Are my kids making choices that I don't agree with, but I can still love, appreciate them, you know? So I don't know. That's off the cuff. Yeah, no, but I mean, it's good and it's all relevant, you know, like this whole parenting thing, it's a constant Adjustment. evolution of adju definitely adjusting with your child and where they're at. And I think something that adults probably really struggle with, too, is like they look at a kid and they expect a kid to be on a certain level. Like, I've faced this with both of my boys. My older boy, he's always been very big for his age. So, like... When he was younger and we started noticing um, autistic s symptoms and he would display them in public, people would think he was one, two, three years older than he actually was and his behavior should have been better. And they would make comments to me or be rude to me. And I'm like, he's two, you know, like he may look like a four year old, but he's only two. And then the same with my youngest, he just developmentally is not on an eight-year-old's level like he just doesn't understand this stuff and he could care less you know right. i mean it's gonna come he's I'm happy not, where he's at <laughs> yes like he's just we, we we always say oh he's living in his own little world like that's legit how it feels most of the time and so me being a special needs mom i have that outlook but adults don't like they put all these expectations on kids to know and be and understand a certain way and the reality is more than likely 
they're not going to. You know, like, why are you trying to shame my kid when he's thinking probably more on a six-year-old level that, oh, I wonder if he's a boy or a girl. He's got a pink water bottle. Maybe it's a girl. Oh, gosh, I don't know what this person is. I don't know how to talk to them. You know what I mean? Kind of thing, like trying to work it out within himself. I mean, my, my thing is the guy totally could have been like, oh, I'm a boy. And if he would have went on, oh, why do you have a pink boy, a water bottle? Oh, boys like pink too. Like, right. don't gen or don't he like associate. Like, just make it acceptable. Oh, they can like that too, just like girls can like this too. Like, don't make it such a clear line in the sand. But there is that um, biblical thing where it says the plank, you know, in your eye is so big compared to the splinter in my eye. You know, what yeah. happened right here? This guy does not take the mercy of what's going on in your son's head or, you know, the thought process. And so what does he do? He, you know, disrespects your son because he's feeling, you know, disrespected. So basically, he's like your son with this little speck in his eye of disrespect. And then what does he do? He demolishes your kid, you know, yeah. and bulldozes. That's why I say is, is not is not right as a parent. You got to protect against that. Not that you did anything wrong. I still think shutting the th conversation down with an apology is fine. Uh, you know, like I tell my son all the time, I'm like, man, you got to be careful with your words. You know, mm -hmm. I said, I've been in many of fights, physical and verbal, just because somebody took what I said was too strong or, you know, personal or, you know, I mean, there it happens you know yeah. so like i'm and i think that's kind of the thing that you can even take away from this and say you got to kind of be careful with your words not that you always have to hold everybody in this highest respect you know oh i honor you no matter what you do or say i honor you and i apologize and i'll submit to you and you, you can boss me around mm -hmm. but be careful of what the reactions of people will say not vice versa back if you say, I love you, you know, to somebody, that will cause a reaction, you know, for them. And then they'll think that you're committed, and, you know, like, and that's what I talked to my son about is like, if you tell a girl you love her, well, why are you telling her that? You know, what do you want from her? What are you going to give her? What are you going to do? And so I think that's kind of one of the processes is just showing them in this experience, you're going to have good conversations with people mm -hmm. most of the time. Yeah. You can do the 80 20 rule most of the time. People are going to love you back. They're going to appreciate you. They're going to conversate. They're going to be kind. 20% of the time, they might be a little edgy because maybe they're going through something. Physical, financial, relationship, maybe they're going through something. And maybe 10% of the time of that 20%, it's going to be a brutal conversation. This was a brutal conversation. This was not. Yeah. This was not okay, right? You know, so. Uh, but I think kind of him understanding the process that this is not everybody it's mm -hmm. not all the time it's not everybody it's like, it's not every gay person i don't know if he's gay or not or whatever but you know like we went to a um place for breakfast and we go in and it's all women and i was like all right you know and so then um i gave her a big tip and stuff like that and uh, we we walk over and there's a puzzle and the puzzle happens to be the flag, <laughs> the rainbow, and, all, and so my daughter's starting to put it together. And to her, it's just a puzzle, you know? Yeah. Now, we've talked about these things before, obviously, because like I said, but, you know, like, she wasn't catching on. And then I saw the puzzle, I was like, oh, I'm catching on. What's going on? So, like, my environment was, I'm just going to eat. Mm -hmm. And then I noticed, yeah, there's a lot of women here. And then I noticed the puzzle. And then I figured, oh, you know, here's what's... And then I saw the flag on the wall. And, and that's what I'm saying. Like, for me, even as an adult, it takes time to process things, you know? Like, I wasn't, like, offensive or, like, let's go or anything like that. I mean, obviously, I gave her a big tip even before I knew, you know, anything. Um, and so that's what I'm saying is, is everybody takes time to process what or who those people are. And I think to your point where you said with your kid being autistic... Probably most people do not ever have that thought come across, oh, I need to handle this kid with white gloves because he's autistic. He doesn't think normally, mm -hmm. you know, so he's more in the 20% realm of his thinking and his attitude and way he says things. And so 
should I give him more grace or be happy? You know, that's what I'm saying. Like, this guy failed to consider your son like he feels your son misconsidered him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I, I, I have a problem with that as an adult trying to relate to people. Women, men, employees. I have a problem all the time trying to dissect you know what am i saying how am i saying it and it's not just what am i saying but how are you hearing it Mm -hmm. you know or i have a hard time with that with my wife you know how are you hearing this you know we 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 say jokes and stuff and sometimes it's like my wife will be like what (laughs) and i'm like i'm literally just joking i'm a hundred percent joking you know it's like you know so and you feel like you're past that with her, you know, with my wife, with your husband. You feel yeah. like we've had this joke a hundred times and now all of a sudden you're turning your head at me and it's literally the same joke we've been talking about for 10 years, you know? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, just people processing the information that they're receiving is unique. It is. It is. And I'm not placing that expectation on others to take my boy's um, differences. and It's not that. It's just I wish people had a little more compassion for other people. Like, I don't know. I just like my default, and I know that everybody's not like this, and I'm not expecting everybody to be like this, but my default is to be like, oh, I wonder why they asked that. I mean, nothing inside of me is going to go to the parent and be like, listen, I mean, come on. I've got long hair and painted fingernails. Like, how much more clear does it need to be? But, um, you know, people are just, they're just so different. And everybody, just like you said, like they all have their stuff that they're hearing things through and that they're going through and that they project on others. And yes, I do need to remember that. Like I wasn't really thinking about that in the moment necessarily. I was just thinking, okay, this might be a problem like maybe this isn't okay but then later i was like but it kind of isn't okay to make somebody apologize for something they don't know anything about or that they don't fully understand i just don't think that that's fair either like i should have been like well my son this is what we're dealing with with him now i need you to apologize do you know but do you see what i'm saying like that's i think that was like the most paradigm shifting thing for me was Knowing that if an apology is required in a situation, I want it to come from my child's heart, not out of me putting that demand on him to do it. Yeah, no, I know. I get that. I mean, but see, like I do that sometimes, too, with, you know, two kids fighting. It's like, all right, now go apologize, you know, and I've kind of tried to take it a step further and not just say I'm sorry, but now say three nice things about that person Mm -hmm. you know and it's always you know something like oh your your teeth are straight your hair straight or (laughs) you know it's not like to the core of you know you are the most caring and affection person in my life you know or you know it's it's kids talking you know but at least i'm trying to get them to start applying good things to other people um and so for saying apologies i mean like my wife, if I'm just being honest, can I be honest for a minute? My wife says I'm the worst at apologizing. And it's 100% true. Because here's the problem. Is if I say, Ashley, you're ugly, because I think you're ugly. And then my wife says, Ben, that was mean. You need to apologize about that. The hardest thing about it, it for me is, well, I think Ashley's ugly. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? Like, for me, it's a truth. Yeah. So why am I apologizing about something I said because I thought it was a truth? Now you're asking me not to be true to myself. Now, could have I said it in a nicer way, like, man, your hair doesn't look as good as it did yesterday. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so, yes, it is challenging me. And that's what I'm trying to say is, is I wish I was a little bit more apologetic, and my wife does too, uh, obviously, but I don't want to be so overly apologetic that I don't that I lose myself. But not just that; it holds no value if you are. You know, what and I that's mean? that fine line you're trying to teach. Yeah. Like, you know, do you? F- and I think that's kind of the point with apologizing. Do you feel like 
you wrong somebody or disvalued them or is it acceptable not to apologize? I think that's maybe a bigger question today is do you feel you should always apologize no matter how you feel only based off of what the person received from what you said? I don't know. I probably have a little bit of a different perspective on this um, <laughs> because I am... People pleasure. <clears throat> Yes, and I'm a habitual apologizer, <laughs> although I've gotten a whole lot better. I mean, when my husband and I were first married, he would constantly tell me, stop apologizing. What are you apologizing for? And Liz even does it to me sometimes. She's like, I have no clue why you're apologizing right now. And I'm like, you know, I, I really don't either. <laughs> but um, I don't want that. Like, me profusely apologizing all the time is from a place of trauma and rejection and wanting to make people happy people pleasing and perfectionism so even though i do it all the time it's not always necessary do you understand what i'm saying i, I do and like my older son has picked up this habit <coughs> even though i've gotten a whole lot better he just he'll have um, emotional outbursts a lot and he always thinks I'm mad and I tell my kids I'm not angry like I'm not angry at you you can't make me angry at you because for him it's a deep thing if someone's angry at him so for instance I'll ask him to do something and he'll just fly off the handle because he doesn't want to do it and his only response in that moment is to yell like a psycho and I tell him I'm like Please stop yelling at me like a psycho. And then he goes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mom. I'm just so sorry. And I'm like, you have nothing to apologize for. Like, it, it's not a big deal. Like, to him, it's such a big deal. And he's profusely apologizing now. And so I don't want that to be my kid's reaction in situations, whether it's trying to make someone happy or for them to fear that rejection that they might get by not apologizing to someone. Like, it's just not always necessary. And in relation to that story about my son, what I have found, and it, this actually applies to all three of my kids, what I have found is if we get into a tiff and, you know, they make a wrong choice or are acting crazy and see that I may get a little aggravated, I step back and I just get quiet and I continue with whatever I'm doing. And every single time they come back when they're ready and they say, Mom, I'm so sorry that I acted that way. And I will also say probably more than half the time they'll say because this is how I was feeling or because I was having a hard time with this because my brother was bothering me or you know whatever like they'll give me an explanation behind why they acted that way with their apology so that's my thing with my with my son in that is it may take him a while to process this and for him to realize maybe that wasn't okay but I need to give him that time to process that instead of forcing him to do something and understand it right now you know right we're asking him to have the same revelation that we might approach and that that's what we always do is is we punish kids because they don't have the same revelation that we do as a 30 year old 40 year old you know and so <clears throat> why are we demanding that kids immediately elevate to our understanding of revelation or what we want mm -hmm. because really did they get it did your son get it his understanding of what happened with this kid and i would beg to say no because you didn't even get it right because yeah. you're trying to process after this guy leaves you're processing on the drive home you're processing at night and that's why i say so terrible about this is it's such a temporal moment in your day but now here we are again talking about it you yeah. know and so for it to have such an impact for somebody's emotional you know to be comforted you know you basically that's what they're asking you is for your life to be ruined so that they can feel some peace or good about who they are mm -hmm. and that's where i say can we make the choices that we make in life and give everybody else the grace to say i wouldn't make that choice like for me if 
if I say I don't want to be gay, then is that demeaning to somebody who wants to be gay? Potentially, but like if I say you're okay to be gay because that was your choice to make that, then please say it's okay for me to make the choice not to be gay, right? Yeah. Like, 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 I mean, I think this thing is a you know two way street, and I, I think that's kind of the the part that for me, I'm trying to give everybody on an individual basis is I'm okay with you. Please be okay with me. You know, because like right now, and I, I understand, you know, the pendulum swings back and forth. Right now, the 40-year-old man is the the modern-day terrorist, you know? So that's me. I'm 40, you know? So um, so I, I get that. You know, I, I'm now the bad guy. And I accept, you know, fine, your views of me as a white man. And you say, oh, well, you're privileged or this or that. Well, you know, I didn't have a dad and then I had an abusive dad and then I had a, you know, another. So, I mean, my life was never financially, you know, beneficial or, you know, uh, I didn't have any white privilege or anything. I saw this thing the other night. Guy brings his, his box. He's like, man, it finally showed up. And he's like, my white privilege. And he opened up the box. And he's like, oh, there's nothing there. <laughs> you know, and it's kind of like this thing of, you know, you, you can say a white privilege, but I mean, there's, there's like no proof to this, you know, I mean, um, and so I can I, I can accept somebody disliking me because of the way I am, no problem. But like, do I now have to apologize to you because you don't like me the way that I am? Is kind of the question. Is like that what we're talking about politically correcting, asking people to now not just believe what I believe, but apologize for being what I dislike. Mm-hmm. I think that's a whole nother step that is strange to me. And again, I don't think it's the law of the land. I mean, it's probably, you know, just 10% of every situation, though. It might, you know, like for me, if I'm if I'm a business person and then I'm like, oh, well, you're not a business person, you know. Well, your husband. I was trying to talk to your husband about, you know, going to the business. He goes, man, I just like doing what I'm doing. You know, he's like, I, I like going to work. He's like, I don't mind working for the man. He goes, you know, I get to go home. I make my money. I do. And so for me, as soon as he said that, I was like, no problem. Yeah. You know, like for me, man, that's your belief. That's your desire. That's your want. At least you know what you want, you know? And I was like, thumbs up. Cool, man. So mm-hmm. I stopped talking to him about, you know, being a boss and stuff like that. Now, and that's what I'm trying to say, like, can we not do that with everybody in every situation? You know, where, why did this political correctness come in? I think that should be the question, like, why, why are we demanding apologies or everybody to have our beliefs? Mm-hmm. And then, like, we've talked about that, like, kind of a parenting. You know, do we do that with our kids, demand that our kids have the same beliefs? Right. You know, is that where it's starting? Like, is it starting at home with us demanding our kids have our beliefs, and then if they don't have our beliefs, we punish them, mm-hmm. and then now they're grown up and they're in society, and they're trying to punish everybody else for not having their beliefs because they saw that perpetuated through their parents. Exactly. <sighs> for real. And for everybody to take on your offenses... <laughs> I don't care what you're offended about. It doesn't offend me. Like, I'm not, I'm okay. Right. It's just a hard concept, I think, for people to to really entertain, even. It's like, oh, no, but you have to believe my way. You have to be offended by the things that I'm offended by, and you have to fix it. You have to make it right. And there's nothing inside of me that has to make it right, you know? Or that has, that has to make me make my kid make it right my kid is a kid kids say stupid stuff all the time (laughs) you know like i mean kids is it's i work with kids like they they just are such unfiltered little beings you know and man just let it go but obviously it's back to the splinter and the plank this guy's got a huge plank in his eye and so To him, it's always agitating him. Everything he sees, everything he views in the world and through everybody else is, they're demeaning me. They they don't like me. They don't believe in me. They don't. And honestly, I don't have time. I I don't have time to care where your life is. Just like, 
I'm so forgetful. Like I am not worried about everybody in life of what all the decisions that they're making are they right or wrong or stuff like that. But I feel like you know that's one of the things that have been produced out of parenting and demanding you know certain mm-hmm. beliefs, the church systems and you know government systems now political correct systems, and so we're at this constant tug of war of me as an individual being able to be free to choose the beliefs that I want. And accept that no matter who else in the world believes those beliefs. Mm -hmm. I think that's the bigger thing. You know, for me is I kind of got this aha moment when um, with podcasting, it's like, be true to yourself. You know, when you say something, know that you're not saying it to be because it's the hot word, the hot subject. You know, like I, I am not looking for titles out there on the Internet of saying, oh, we need to talk about this today. What I'm looking for is what, like you said, this experience. And now, what do you do with this experience? And then how do you, you know, change your beliefs if needed so that it will serve you the rest of your life with peace and grace and understanding and relaxing, you know, to feel like you always have to be on the edge or that your kid has to be on the edge to please somebody. Ouch. Yeah. Where are they going to find the pleasure in their life if they're always feeling they have to please the next person? You're going through stuff, personal stuff right now. You can't. You can't. <laughs> yeah, I know. And, and just just to throw this in there, I'm very grateful that this situation happened. Like, I'm still processing a lot of it, and I thought it just would be a good conversation for us to have. But like, I am grateful that this happened because it just displayed another area that, okay, maybe I need to pay more attention to this or. It gave me an opportunity to have more conversations with my son, to talk about him, about how different people are, you know? Like, it it's honestly, it's a blessing, and it's going to be used for good for both he and I. So, I'm not angry. I mean, don't get me wrong, I kind of was a little shattered that maybe I should have handled it differently. But, you know, that's that's neither here or there. That's part of both of us growing. Yeah, you know but I, I mean? do that like, all the time. I'm like, oh, I should have done that better. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and honestly, like I said, I'm non-confrontational, so I probably wouldn't have changed it too terribly right. much. Um, gosh, I was probably that person You probably would have sometimes. apologized yourself, you <laughs> um, know. <laughs> I'd be like, I'm so sorry my kid offended you. Right. Or you're, you're offended by my kid. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's okay. It's really okay. And... <sighs> It opened my eyes, and it, it's just a growing pain. That's what I call them <laughs> with the kids. And both he and I will be able to have conversations over and over, and that's a good thing. Like That's what we need to be doing anyway. That's all parenting is, is talking and talking and talking. And my goal is not to control them like that. I want to reach their heart. Like, I want to be able to touch my children's heart and to protect their heart and for them to protect my heart. And there's going to be many times that both of us fail at that miserably, and that's okay, too. Another opportunity is going to come up, unfortunately. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. You know that old adage where it's like, go around the mountain, go around the mountain, go around the mountain, and you're like, man, this is the same thing. I see the same thing. And I think that's like as parenting, we're always saying, man, the same conversation, the same argument, the same, you know, frustration, the same response. Why? Because we're not using every new opportunity as a new way to look at it or new Mm -hmm. revelation or new thought. So like you said, I mean, this is the 10th, 20th, 30th yeah. conversation. Well, guess what? You're going to get to 200 conversations about the same kind of topic. And, mm-hmm. you know, and I think that's that's the good part about parenting. And that's the good part about marriage and relationship. Like, I always have this, this idea of old people, they hardly ever fight. I mean, old people hardly ever fight. Um, I love being around old people because they never fight. Like... And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, this guy's snoring, he's got potato chips all over him, you know, his clothes are on the ground, and, you know, these people aren't fighting about these little things that would seemingly be very agitating to newlyweds, and, you know, Mm -hmm. and I think what happens is, over time of all these experiences, 
we start receiving and giving grace and understanding. And, you know, like for me, if I look at this guy and I say, uh, man, he's got potato chips all over him. I can't believe he would disrespect his wife and, you know, his area. And now she has to clean it. Or, But it might be that he can't see very well. Mm-hmm. And she knows he can't see very well, you know. And that's what I'm saying, like, in relationship, you'll be able to view your kids obviously better than a stranger. In a in a instant of a flash communication with one sentence, this guy's like, oh my God, it's disrespectful. Yeah. And you, you're like, no, we, we've had this conversation before. He, he, we've had, I, I understand he thinks a little bit, you know, slower than maybe what you would think or, you mm-hmm. know, process. And again, all this is new. But that's what I love about old people is, They've had so many experiences and they've changed over the time. They've adjusted their lives to match ebb and flow with that other person, you know, and that's what I think so great about marriage. Today, my marriage isn't over. It's going to be there tomorrow. It's going to be there next day. It's going to be the next week and next month and Mm -hmm. next year and 20 years. And, And so if I approach my marriage with a timeline of 50 years, 60 years, 75 years, then I don't have to solve all my problems that day. You know, I don't, I don't have to uh, make her adjust everything in that day mm-hmm. or my kids. You know, like when kids turn 18, you're, you're not less impactful at that point. They're still going to call you. They're going to still want to talk about things and stuff like that. You know, and so like for me, I mean, I'm 45, still talking to my mom, you know, about things and stuff like that. And so I think that's the more important thing is not how they handled a certain situation or you handled a certain situation, but to think about how you can reapply based off this situation for the next 40, 50, 60, 70 years with your kids, how to reapply this long-term relationship with your husband and stuff like that. Like if we look so focused at this one problem, like this guy was, then it's, it's a huge event, you know, but If we look at it in a timeline of 75 years, man, it was a small, temporarily piece of time. So, like, my judgment for my kid based on such a small little experience doesn't make sense, Mm -hmm. you know? Because, like, I got to even approach my kid that there's things I'm going to be proud about in the future with him that I haven't been experienced yet because he hasn't done them yet because he is not that age or, you know, and yes, there's going to be things that I might be disappointed about with my kid. But again, am I counting the one action as all of my emotions of time or can I take them out because they're small little pieces? And that's, I think the approach we need to have as spouses and parents, you know, with all of these situations. This was a bad situation, but over time. Yeah, of course. Last yeah. words? No, I'm good. Thanks for having this conversation with me. <laughs> <laughs> Stop demanding your beliefs on other people, especially other kids. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Right. Give kids grace. Lord of mercy. Until next time.